back to Bourbon Barrel Talk. I'm your host, Scott Minton. Today, we are sitting in the bourbon bunker with Mr. Nick Hayden. It's just the two of us. Uh, that's a song by Will Smith. It is. the yeah. Just the two of us. Yeah. Who did yeah. it originally? Was that Bill Withers? I don't know. Sure. Well, I mean, I'm just... I'm, I'm not that old. That's before my time. <laughs> I, I, I get it. It's before, it technically was before my time. I just I just remember that's where he stole that hook from, from that song, Just the Two of Us. I, I remember it from, like, Austin Powers. <laughs> was I, it in Austin Powers? I think, I think with, like, Dr. Evil and the Mini-Me, Just the Two of Us. Huh. I must I must forgot it. I'm, I, I either slept through that part of the movie or just completely forgot about it. It, it could be both. <laughs> it probably was both. <laughs> was not a huge, uh, not a huge uh, Dr. Evil and... Uh, Austin Powers fan, so we'll, we'll just go with that. So anyway, this is our third installment of what I'm going to call Nick's Picks, and uh, the next bum, one bum, bum. <laughs> is going to be a, a super fun one as well, um, but uh, we're doing Bardstown Bourbon Company, which, by the way, we are scheduled hopefully soon to, to get out and actually speak with Danny or uh, the master distiller out there uh, pretty soon, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see what that looks like, but uh, tell us what we got here, man, for today for the tasting. Yeah, no, uh, uh, Nick and Steve and uh, even Danny and the crew are doing great things down there at uh, Barstown Bourbon Company. So if you haven't gone, uh, I highly suggest going. It's probably at least a half-day event. I mean, you can do your tour tasting. Uh, you can have some pours, good food. I mean, it really sucks you in. So um, great tour. I can't speak more highly of them. Uh, today we got three of the rarer bottles, not the rarest, but the rarer bottles. Um, and that's only because they've been discontinued. So we have three collabs uh, in front of us. Uh, so moving left to right, we're going to do the collab with Copper and Kings, uh, which is down here in downtown Louisville, a couple blocks from the house. Um, another great tour. Uh, if you want a hidden gem off the bourbon trail, I highly suggest going to Copper and Kings. Absolutely. I think Brandon and them do a fantastic job over there. They've got some great products. I love the fact that you can bottle your own single barrel at the end of the, you know, pick. So, uh, I mean, at the end of the tour. So, that, uh, lots of cool things going on at Copper and Kings for sure. Yeah, and I think they've even opened up the outdoor, like, patio area. So, you can actually go get cocktails, like, during the day or early evening. Um, so, they did this. This is uh, finished in one of their apple brandy barrels. Um, this They utilized um, uh, Indiana Dislate, so MGP, uh, and then finished it in the brandy casks. The second bottle we have is the Pfeiffer Pave Batch 1. So there's actually three different Pfeiffer Paves. They did number one, then they did number two, and then they did their single barrel. So they utilized the Tennessee Dissolute, which is likely Dickel, finished it in those casks. Uh, my understanding with those is they actually went over and handpicked the casks uh, left a little of the fluid in there, but really saran wrapped them, like made sure nothing leaked out and brought them back. Um, so uh, that'll be a neat little treat. And then for dessert, uh, the third one, uh, we're going to go with, back with the MGP just a little bit. We're going to go with Goodwood. So Goodwood, this is the Honey Ale. Um, again, this is another downtown local brewery. Um, I don't think you can do tours, but you can definitely like walk around in their tap house. It's like right off of Main Street. Uh, right down from, I think, the Spanish Fly or something like that. And, but. and Goodwood has some terrific beer, so I'm super excited to dive into these and, and talk a little bit more. I've tried them all before. It's just been a while, and uh, to, to be able to get in and uh, try these again for, the, I'm going to say, for the first time in a long time. Um, yeah, it's been a while. to do that, so we'll, we'll definitely get diving in on this. So let's start off with the Copper and Kings. Like you said, this is the Apple Brandy Finish. Um Dude, this one is swinging in at what around 110 or 105 or all these lower proof i can't remember it's, it's right on the side, right it's, on the side. Uh, so they on the first bottles um so they first released in 2019 so you can't likely get one of these bottles unless you find a rare hole in the wall probably like texas or tennessee or something like that um it's coming get at 120 proof 120 that's what i like i love that hot stuff so the nose on this thing is very very nice I'm wondering yeah. how old this actual the bourbon was before they put it in the in the brandy cask. I think there's a lot of NDAs, but I, I heard it's like probably around the eight or nine year. Oh, so it's definitely an older. The, the again. I know. I, I get what you're saying. NDA can't talk about it. Blah blah blah. Yeah, <laughs> all that good stuff. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I I always ask and they never like really tell me. So it's so the nose on this. I'm getting a lot of different things, and the apple definitely comes through. But I, I'm still getting a lot of uh, your traditional like. Uh, tobacco a little bit of uh almost like a leather 
what, then, I, what I consider like more your MGP notes, like like, yeah. you, like your, I don't know, again, that leather, the wood, you do get like that slight sweetness, like that builds up in there. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, the, the, the front mouth on this thing, man, is just terrific. The mid palette's good. Not a whole lot of finish. I mean, it, it does have a finish. It doesn't have that normal... It falls off pretty quintessential, you know, yeah. Kentucky hug. It doesn't have anything like yeah, that. It falls off pretty. Now these have been open, so I don't know if that has changed anything again. But it's one of those. The finish is shorter than what I would expect. Um, you still get a especially lot. for one twenty. Yeah, um, but that mid palate, really good. I like that sweetness that actually you know couples with some of those like the, the other notes, like the wood notes. Yeah, and and the funny thing is, it's it's not like oak, like it. <laughs> It's almost like a, like when you smell like a, a smoked wood, like a, like a pecan or a peach or. I could definitely. I, I, I see where you're going with this. Like if you go like out by like a barbecue spot. Yeah. 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 And you just kind of like, hmm. Like yeah. It's like, a, it's like, like a, almost a, like a barbecue smell. Yeah. Right? It's almost like a yeah yeah. It's like the when you smell that wood burning like at a barbecue shop things like that. It's almost got a a, a smell or a, and even a, a a mid palate that's reminiscent of that kind of wood flavor, not necessarily what we would consider, you know, your your typical oak that we would get off a of normal bourbon or anything to that nature. Yeah, but no, definitely. Um, very ju- definitely good, complex. I'm gonna drop a water in there just because that's the rule. I don't want to, but we're going to see where we're at on this bad boy. All right, changes the nose a little bit, but not too much. No, this is. Definitely good. Makes the nose sweeter with a little bit of water. And that could be bringing out some more of the, like those brandy notes. It definitely smooths out the mid palate and the finish. Um, not that the finish needed to be smoothed out at all. I, I didn't hate it with water. I mean, I think that, you know, it's something that you could drink. I still prefer it neat, but I think overall, solid pour for sure. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Now, the, the, the Pfeiffer Pave, because yeah. you're saying French. Yeah, and we probably should start off with this probably first in all reality. This is 107 proof, yeah. uh, finished in a Cabernet Sauvignon barrels. Uh, I do have a slight twang, so the Pfeiffer Pave Reserve. So if I say that wrong, uh, feel free to correct me. Uh, my wife corrects me all the time. <laughs> that, that's their job as wives, right, to correct us? Yeah. Tell us that we're dumb and wrong. Yeah, no, they, what, what's unique is on the back of each bottle, like they're etching. Like, uh, each one has, like, their own little thing. Like, you got the Copper and King, the Anne logo. But, yep. like, the Pfeiffer Pave, you got... A little logo. cowgirl. Yeah. Yep. So. No, I, I, I do love what they've done with their bottles as far as, like you said, that little etching or, like, sticker or whatever yeah. it is that's in that, that kind of shows through. It's kind of reminiscent of uh, the BTAC collection. You know how you got a picture of George T. Stagg and, yeah. you know, William LaRue Weller and all those that are kind of highlighted through the bottle. But that's obviously on the back of the actual label, not necessarily the actual bottle itself. Yeah, so. no, they um, these bottles, like I said, I think they're just classy, the nice cork, uh, I mean, compared to the first iteration. So technically before this apple brandy, there was actually uh, apple brandy number one. So it's called, instead of Barstown Bourbon Company, it's called Collaboration. So a lot of times I call that the cinder block. But you'll see it, it has actually a black label. So that was actually the first iteration of the Apple Brandy. And then they had uh, the Mistel, and then they came back and did the new bottle with the Apple Brandy. Gotcha. Hmm, I didn't know that. I knew that they had the red label. That's the only one I'd ever seen like that. Yeah, so they actually had one before that. So it's the square one. So the collaboration is actually part of Barstown Bourbon Company and Copper and Kings. Right. So on this Pfeiffer, it's weird. Like the nose, it, it does get a little bit of that, that Cabernet type scent to it i almost get more like nuts yeah but i was gonna say it's almost like nuts like peanuts pecans something yeah, yeah. I, I get some heavy nut notes i don't get much on the nose when it comes to like when i think of like a like more like grape or, you know right. you know something like a, a cabernet or like those that strong yeah no like it, those strong earth tones like i'd expect yeah and it's 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 not like that but it's definitely got something to it there the front is actually got more bite for a 107 than i was expecting Kind of, and it, it, it uh, hits the inside of your lip and kind of yeah. like your gum area, almost like mint, like mint to mouthwash. Now, in a good way, not in a bad way, but there's no mint flavor at all. It's actually really delicious. It's got a lot of caramel notes. It's got some complex, like, uh, toffee. It's got a lot of fruit in there, too, but I don't know that I would distinguish it as grape, though. No, no. Like I said, I think it's a lot more subtle. Like, when, when I looked at, when I first looked at this bottle, like, I thought it was going to be, like, in my face, like wine, you know, like 
I'm going to get a lot of like that stone fruit, you know, kind of like that raisin. Um, and, and you actually don't get this again. It's more that, that nutty, you know, uh, you get some of the sweet tones, you get some of the, the drier tones on that mid. It still has a shorter finish. Um, yeah. Yeah. So far, both of them have had pretty quick finishes. I put a couple of drops of water in here just to kind of see what I think about it with a couple of drops to I mean, mellow it out. I mean, honestly, if you like a good finish, I, I think I like it. I really enjoy this, um, for what it is. It's, well, you know me, I'm not huge on finished products unless it's a rye, but yeah, this is, this is an excellent pour as well. Um, yeah, water just. It no, just I, it, I think it would dilute it too much. I, I recall putting it on like a, a cube or something like that, and it was it did it, it overdid it. Like so, it's sitting at one one oh seven right now. So I'm assuming that because you said this is Dickel, right? At least that's the I didn't say Dickel. I know, <laughs> but well, it is Tennessee. Di- yeah, uh, this list. So yeah, so yeah, most I mean, so, so most likely Dickel is what you said, right? But that being said, like typically Dickel is like an eight eight percent rye, right? Yeah. So when I added water, the rye popped, like it actually came out. Which rye, rye is finicky. It right. is real finicky. So I, I'm kind of surprised that that's what happened to it. So I definitely do not prefer this one with water in it. Um, not that I that I mind the rye, but if I'm going to drink something like this, right, I'm drinking it for what the, what they made it to be, which is obviously a little bit sweeter, more fruity, um, forward, you know, that, that, that nice peanutty slash, you know, nutty tone or flavor. So I don't know. Definitely going neat on that one as well. All right, bringing up third base here. We got the Goodwood Honey Ale. Yeah, so we're, we're still this one. We're sitting at uh, looks like 110 proof. So what's the other good one when they have? So so this is the um, Brandy Barrel Honey Ale casks. Right. The other one is uh, Walnut casks. Walnut, that, which uh, is like the brown label. So gotcha. this is orange. Yes. The other one's brown. Gotcha. I was trying to remember. It was it was the walnut. Is what the yeah, yeah, which is a solid one. I uh, I've already finished my two on that one, but it's uh we'd do that one with like a, an old fashioned a lot of the times because it kind of picks up those walnut notes. Really, hmm. I would have never guessed. I know, right? Clever with the naming. So what's the what's the ABV on this one or the proof? One ten. One ten. Okay, so we went one twenty, one hundred seven, one ten. So this one, I'm getting a little bit more than the the wood on this one as well. Yeah, now this one on the um, that front palate, like I get more of that, like you can tell like that little bite, like almost like that brandy, but it does have that sweetness going down. This one that has a lot longer finish than the other, the other two. This one's lingering around my my cheeks a lot. It almost like you get like a hint of like a citrus on it. It's kind of weird. Yeah, I kind of get where you're coming from there. Almost like an orange. Yeah. Yeah. Weird thing. So mid, almost no up front, like. It's not like either one of the others. So yeah, there's almost the other, nothing up front. Yeah, it's the all, other ones were right right in your face. Right. And this one's mid palate to finish. But the finish is it's stronger than the other two, but it's still not like it's it's still well above the collarbone. Like right. it's not it's not your typical Kentucky hug type finish on that piece. Definitely a, a, a tasty pour. Let me get an, let me get another sip here and then I'm gonna go to water. I'm really just trying to pick up that I'm getting like that citrus, but there's something else in there. Like almost like a baked good or like a baking spice. It's not cinnamon. It's not nutmeg. That is weird. I know what you're talking about. I'm trying just trying to pick it up. It's it's some kind of like baking type spice. It's got you know more of that uh like sweet slash spicy. I just kid. I'm I, I. It's just completely completely puzzling for me at that point, man. I don't know. And I get a little vanilla on it, which is weird too. I figured with it, you know, being a honey ale, that it wouldn't produce any vanilla at all it would be more of a straight sweetness than yeah anything like that so i don't know yeah would, no, these three are, are definitely good like i said it's uh they don't i don't think they drink as hot as what the proof is like I, I didn't get the hotness on the apple brandy like i would not have guessed i would i would have guessed a, above 100 proof but i would not have guessed 110 or 120 hmm. so the goodwood to me is the only one that does drink closer to proof yeah and th- that could be because of spice Right, and that's what I said. I just I wish I could put my, I don't know. It's so weird. It's not cinnamon. It's not nutmeg. It's why is my brain having a mental lapse today? I wish we had the will. <laughs> I would look to see what other spices would show up on there. Anyway, but uh, that, that I think that's it. The, the water to me did nothing for it, you know. So 
I'm going to definitely say we're going to uh, – all three of them to me are neat pours. Um, I'd go neat, uh, all three. Um, man, to pick a favorite, dude, like that's crazy. Each one, to each is their own. Um, yeah, they're all so unique in their own way. If I, had, if I had to rank them, I would personally probably go Goodwood, but I like that little spice, and I like that finish. Then I'd go Apple Brandy and then the Pfeiffer Pave. Well, see, I think I would go Goodwood, Pfeiffer, Brandy. Just because I kind of like that um, mid palate on that Pfeiffer. Uh, yeah, I mean it was good. I don't know. That's so hard. The, they're both. They're all three excellent pours. I, like I said, I don't even know that I even have a favorite. Like I, it, it, man, that's crazy. I'm gonna go back to the nose on these things. So the Pfeiffer's got a great nose after it's been sitting a while. Yeah, and that one, when when people got it, I told them to um, air it out for a little bit. I think it does open it up a little bit after it sits. Yeah. And the good wood too. I mean, it, it, the the longer it's set there, the the better the nose is getting on it as well. Hmm. Well, three unique pours, all coming from Bardstown Bourbon Company. Source products. Speculation for the Copper and Kings would be MGP because it says Indiana Distillate. Distillate. The Pfeiffer Pave. Uh, we are guessing because it says Tennessee Distillate that it's probably Dickel. And then the good wood also said Indiana, so I'm assuming that's MGP as well. For one, I think it's the only person that I think that's got <laughs> bourbon old enough to <laughs> yeah no all to do th- that with all three great pours a uh, good bottle again um, I can't speak more highly of them what they're doing down there uh, I don't know with Copper and Kings uh, with the new merger I think they merged with uh, Constellation or Constellation bought them out so hopefully they do more collabs but it doesn't seem like that's in the works but. I think there's going to be a variety of different uh, wine producers out of Cali uh, that are going to partner up. Uh, I hear the new Ferdinand uh, bottles coming out this fall, winter, and that's just supposed to be dynamite. That will give the Labad a run for its money. Gotcha. Hmm. So uh, I guess I guess I'm throwing plugs for <laughs> Marstown, but I guess just follow social media and stuff like that uh, on the releases. Uh, go down, take a visit. It's a, a great campus. They're really doing great things down there. Yeah, New the, bottling the, line. The restaurant's at fantastic, too. Yeah, zero complaints, except it takes me four to five minutes to get there. Yep, so good deal. Well, all right, if you want to find us at Bourbon Barrel Talk, you can. You can look at our Facebook page, our Instagram, our Twitter. You can also email us at bourbonbarreltalk at gmail.com. Um, if you want to check out the website, you can. It's still under construction. Um, this is Scott and Nick signing off. Peace out.